you something very simple. It's not as complex as Carmen's. And between the two of them is where you'll probably end up operating. So if this is the conscious mind, and this is the unconscious, then there are a set of interventions that you can use which are biased more toward one or the other. Where does the metabolic go? What's here? Somewhere toward the end here. Notice it's not pure conscious operations because when you ask a series of metabolic questions, especially when you iteratively are specifying a noun or a verb or some part of the presentation, you're, the, the conscious metamodal verbal package questions forces a person internally to find in their unconscious the answers to things that were not explicit before. So even at this end, with the metamodal or verbal package, there is a strong component of unconscious function. Nevertheless, from the coach's point of view, this is a more conscious tool than what? Give me an example of something that's at this end of the continuum. NASA, NASA? Okay. So any one of the games. Any one of the games here, there's almost no conscious participation except to know what's the next step in the process. So it's the, the games are heavily biased, the Nuko games are heavily biased toward interacting with the unconscious and assigning to the unconscious the right and the responsibility of developing the new choices. As you know from my question the other day, most of you have gone through NASA, Alphabet, yeah, Breath of Life, Rhythm of Life, and whether variation on dance of life you've done. And you don't consciously at this moment know how you're going to behave differently in the context that you have. You do know something enormously interesting has happened. There's been a significant shift, but you don't know exactly. And it's this is a know-nothing state of high value. If you rehearse now how you are going to go in and talk to your teenage daughter, if you rehearse now how you are going to change your relationship with your boss or your coworkers or an uncle or an aunt or a grandma, you would be deciding before the experience how to do something. And you would miss so many cues, so many invitations, so many opportunities that are presented to you on the spot in the experience. And this is one of the profound differences between classic and new code. Classic code, you rehearse and you decide it consciously and then rehearse and blah, blah, blah. And it works, but it's slow, it's clunky, it's not ecological. There's a lot of opportunity for content and position, whether you intend it or not. In the new code, you manipulate never behavior, you only manipulate state. And you impact it with the context. So that when you walk into the context, what you saw and heard while you were in the high performance state from NASA is reactivated and you start doing new things that you didn't consciously know you were about to do. That is, you're taking advantage of what's actually being presented on the spot, in the moment, in the context, without being filtered by any particular intention or rehearsal that occurred before. And this is on the fly, creative, powerful stuff, the application of a high performance state to a context. So, Insofar as you have expectations, you're destroying your ability to, to operate well. Insofar as you decide consciously how you want to be different in the context, you're wasting your time. Now, you can set boundary conditions. You can say, uh, with your signals, unconscious. When I walk into this context, the one I just finished getting myself ready for, I want to make sure there's no rupture in the relationship. So you can set that. It's with your wife, it's with your husband, it's with your teenage daughter, it's with your grandfather. You can set boundary conditions, say unconscious, where you respect this particular boundary condition. That at the end of this exchange, no matter how provocative, no matter how passionate, no matter how whatever it is, there will still be an intact relationship between me and this person or these people that I'm going to do this with. Now, that's only putting boundary conditions. The rest, anything not forbidden is permitted. So the high performance state, when reactivated, when you re-enter the context, will generate a lot of stuff. Some of it you'll be puzzled by, some of it you'll be amused by, some of you be dazzled by. But as long as you set your boundary conditions, it will be not only acceptable, but delightful for you to have the new choices and new qualities. 
I haven't answered your question because I'm putting your question off to the demonstration of the give with it. Okay with you? So this is a really simple. So the question is where along this continuum are you going to make your interventions? Are you going to bias yourself toward conscious interactions, verbal, etc., to try to, the, the client wants to understand. By the way, clients who want to understand things, you should work with them at this end. Clients that don't, want, don't care about what it means, well, you probably want to do some of this. What's missing? Remember the teeter-totter I just talked about? What's missing for this client? What don't they have that if they had it, they would have the choices and quality of experience that they want? That's the thinking I want. 